Welcome to Pop and Positivity Podcast, Kiss FM Chicago. Joel McHale, the one and only award-winning comedian, host, TV. We do whatever. The, the man's a, he's a, uh, I want to tell you, Joel, when I award winning. When, if I go to if if I go to hell, if I go to hell, all right, it's gonna be trying to log on to Zoom links the entire time I'm there, because. Yeah. It's just, it's never, it's never just as easy as, as, as one click. I, you would think I'd be so good because I click all the time. My whole life has just been clicking, but for whatever reason, this new technology, it sucks. I blame me. Brady, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I know that we all have, we're just stuck in this husk of a flesh, flesh and bone for a few years and a lot of it's hard. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to pray that you know things get better the most first world problem ever all right well dude uh thank i feel you. like they have this problem in the third world as well <laughs> absolutely all I the worlds my version of hell will be a airport bus <laughs> oh okay with Nothing. maybe trying to fit your luggage on what, what's the problem with the airport bus no i just feel like a lot of there's some airports when you get you know you get to the gate then like oh no, no you got to take a bus to another thing i'm like uh oh. Great. That's, I don't know why that popped in my head. No, because you're going to miss your flight if you have to do that. You're screwed. Well, if you're checked in and you already have your bags checked, they, then they have to wait. I think Whitney, don't you think Joel McHale at this point in his life, like, why is he flying commercial? Like, I know. You, you are like a, you're like <laughs> I, upper echelon. I asked the same question about myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we're so glad to have you on here. Enough with the hell talk because we love positivity and we are pumped about you coming to Chicagoland. I'm I think positive uh, hell talk is whole untapped part of broadcast. So we should think about that, guys. There we go. Okay, well, now we're talking positive. Okay, but we are so excited that you're coming back to Chicagoland. Uh, I love Chicago, and it was like a magical city when I was a child because all my cousins were there, and the buildings were really tall. Then you had Great America right there, the hot dogs. Yeah. The now I find disgusting pizza. It's a magical place. What? <laughs> why? What? Like, what, what is it about Chicago comedians? Right? Like. You go back to, I mean, obviously Second City's a renowned spot for people to get their, their stars and stuff. What is it about this city, do you think, that draws in these young and upcoming comedians and, and just, it breeds uh, funny people? What, is, what do you think it is? Jeez, yeah, I think it's your guys' tradition. And uh, I think when you, you're the center of the Midwest, sorry, Cleveland, and, uh, or <laughs> St. Louis, uh, and I think it just attracts all the people that grew up around there who happen to be very funny. And then, you know, so many of them go on to, you know, gigantic SNL or whatever show they wrote and directed. But I think that Chicago's just always had a really great theater tradition and continues to. And that's pretty remarkable that it's continued the way it has. And because it was that way when I was a teenager and that way when my dad was a teenager. So uh, I, it's remarkable. You also get all those folks from the South coming up, but so it's, it's a real mecca, you know, before, once they started, you know, pretty much stopped slaughtering cattle, they turned to comedy. I was going to say, maybe it was the winters. We have to <laughs> laugh through the snow or something like we have right. to find some type of comic relief from our winters here, but tell us what are we going to expect with your visit to Chicago? Like whenever you're a comedian, I'm, I'm always like, think about this, like, I know you have to practice, but do you ever just like, like kind of come up with something on stage and hope it goes well? Like, tell me, how does that like genius work for you? Oh, how my genius works. Thanks yeah. for saying that. Uh, uh, let's see. I'll probably phone it in, tell jokes from 15 years ago and, and then watch the clock tick down and then walk off stage. No, uh, uh, that is how I develop material, not by sitting and writing it. I mean, I have ideas, but I get it by when I'm in clubs, I will throw out whatever the idea is that I'm working on. And then with the audience, basically kind of figure it out. And then I'll take those little parts, put them back in the next show and see if there's anything happening. Uh, it's harder with bigger theater shows, uh, but not impossible. It's, but I always kind of go, well, you have jokes that you have ready to go, but be prepared for anything that can happen. Mm. 
Uh, and that's sometimes I get some really great stuff or I get people walking out and screaming at me. <laughs> that has never happened, has Bye, it? Bye guys, see you later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have people have, huge groups of people have walked out on things. Oh, you know yeah. what? I no, when, uh, when Trump was first elected and I was talking about him on stage, it was a very touchy time, touchier than I expected. And uh, yeah, they were they were real sensitive. Well, and it can swing the other way too. So uh, it's I you know they always like oh you should be offending thirty percent of your audience all the time. And uh, that's why when I walk out on stage, I just usually go hey thirty percent of you fuck you. And um, <laughs> I don't I don't do that. I don't I don't do that. This is a positive show. This is it's like it's <laughs> like look to, look to your left, look to your right. Yeah. One of you is going to be leaving very shortly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so, so when I like, I just did four shows in Irvine, California, at the Improv there, and I hope to get like five or ten minutes out of that stuff. So, uh, I guarantee you'll be seeing a lot of that um, on on Saturday at Rivers Casino. So, yeah. uh, uh, but I re uh, half my cousins will be there, so uh, <laughs> there will probably be even uh, healthier heckling happening. Mm. Yeah, I got I got I got to ask you because, you know, you, you mentioned the word sensitive, right? So do you feel I mean, you started in, in the 2000s, like you really got gained popularity with the soup, which was all about just Hollywood, you know, satire and just really bringing in the jokes. Now are is Hollywood too sensitive? Is it is it is it that much different decades later? No, it's they're just uh, I, I when I hear comedians say I can't play colleges or I can't. Yeah, I can't tell these jokes uh, anymore, or whatever it is. Then, I mean, I'm always like, I don't know what you're talking about because uh, the audiences all seem pretty happy to. I mean, people pay money to go see you do these things, so uh, for the most part, every audience member is game, uh, unless they're super drunk, which does happen, uh, or they're you know who knows something's going on in their lives. But I I find things like college. Uh, audience is the, the best audience. They are the most uh, energetic. They still are looking forward to their lives and actually have physical energy. Um, so I no, I don't think Hollywood is uh, more sensitive than it used to be. I think it very, I, mean, I think the Me Too movement very correctly uh, got rid of a huge trove of assholes. And so uh, when I hear like, People go like, I'm tired of cancel culture. And I was like, I don't know. Seem to be a, quite a lot of assholes out there that should have been canceled. So uh, I, th I just think when it turns back on them is when they start getting antsy. So anyway, that's a very long answer. I do think there's tons of jokes you can't tell anymore, which they sh you shouldn't. There's a lot. And they're like, yeah, maybe that was uh, not so great. Okay, so I had this conversation, I know Whitney's got a question, but I had this conversation literally yesterday with a friend and we were just talking about, well, I can say whatever I wanna say. And I'm like, sure, you can say whatever you wanna say, freedom of speech, but also we are evolving in what we say. I mean, let, let, let's not forget about in the 16 or 17 or 1800s, people were saying things that you definitely would not say today and rightfully so. So I people think- People were saying stuff 10 years ago that they, you, that turns out not, and people are like well why can't i I was like go ahead uh but <laughs> there if you don't expect consequences for anything you're going to ever do then you're a crazy person uh so i i don't walk out on there being careful like oh boy what if i can say this uh i don't i don't really that's not really my greatest concern is shit was it funny and uh you know i think I think comedians that walk out on stage and are trying to shock people, I don't, I mean, that's not comedy to me at the same way. I'm like, you can have super funny people be very dirty or have them be Seinfeld who are very clean and they're both hilarious, part of a spectrum. But I find it weird when comedians are just like, oh, you're just trying to make, you're just trying to say the most provocative thing. And that's, I guess that's okay. If it's super funny, then great. But if it's not, and it's just, you know, provocative, then it's not comedy. Well, here's, I'm um, switching gears a little bit about being funny. Do your kids think you're funny? No. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> my kids don't think I'm funny either. Or like well, my- Well, Whitney, you're not. And <laughs> I'm not. We're, if, I would find it very disturbing 
if my kids were just like, <laughs> you did it again, dad. <laughs> you did it again. How does he do it? Uh, I pictured that happening. That's what I pictured your dinner table like. No, I'll get, I'll tell a joke. And then I'll, if it's, they find it funny, my 17 year old go, huh. <laughs> and uh, that'll be that. And so same thing with my wife. I, I score about every 25 jokes with her. So uh, yeah, I don't think I would. Yeah, no, they are also very sarcastic and they give me so much shit. It's you, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, so I, and I, it would be again, very odd if they were like, you are really a crack up. So uh, yeah, I remember I dated a woman very long ago because I've been married for 26 years. Thank you. And uh, she laughed at everything I said. And I was like, this is like an episode of Twilight. Oh, no, it was that episode of Outer Limits where the guy doesn't, he realizes he's in hell because uh, everything he does is successful. And he's like, I, I hate it. So that was very, I couldn't tell. I, then I, when I was dating her, I started just saying stuff. I would be like, corn on the cob. And then she'd be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, oh boy. So that red flag. Yeah. What is the most fun you've ever had in your career? Was it community? Oh, geez. Um, boy, I don't know. Uh, I very, uh, that's a good question. No, I've had uh, a lot of fun. I don't, there wasn't a moment where I was like, this is the most fun, perfect. Uh, I mean, community was a lot of fun and a lot of, uh, it was a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I looked back on that and went, oh, I made something good and I got to be with people that I love. And that was really fun. Uh, the soup when it started was i mean we that that family of people was it was super fun so i just did a movie that i had a lot of fun on um it's you, you never you know it's always kind of a moving target i mean i got to i mean years ago i got to go flying with like uh, the air force so i was i still look at that i was like man going up in the thunderbird was about the most fun i've ever had and why did i choose acting why don't i become a pilot so uh, it's those weird little moments where like I got to work with Steve Martin. I would just be like, I cannot believe it's Steve Martin looking at me right now. Uh, so uh, though I get same thing with Robin Williams where I'm like, I cannot believe it's happening in my life. So uh, yeah. So there I've, I've, yeah, I've been very lucky. Star girl was a lot of fun this year. So uh, that was a dream come true and got to work with lots of cool folks. And uh, I still, to this day, I can't believe people pay me to, do it. So, and then I demand even more money. And I would, I would, I wanted to be paid for this interview, which is not happening. And I'm pissed. <laughs> Whitney's, Whitney's gonna pay you. Whitney's gonna pay you. Oh, oh great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Um, in the airport bus, meet me there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay. So I also want to know like philanthropy, you're really big into giving back. What? Yes, I am. Yeah. I really am. Tell us your heart behind that. Other than just the pre my presence everywhere uh <laughs> let's see uh oh i don't know uh, i we my wife and i give most of our money to scientology <laughs> and uh no uh uh we i don't know we just uh, my wife is way is a much better person than i am and uh so i we have a yeah we just have a bunch of causes we like you know from a lot of cancer research stuff yeah children's cancer research stuff um there's a Make lot a of, I host a lot of homeless outreach stuff here in uh, LA. Uh, I am sure homelessness is a issue in Chicago as well. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, I'm host, hosting a thing tomorrow night in Seattle for um, the Fred Hutch cancer research. And like, I just hope to open an old folks home for Alzheimer's patients because uh, my mother-in-law has Alzheimer's. So uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like I do. It sounds like I do a lot, but I really don't. Uh, I'm very selfish and I just want to buy old cars. <laughs> well, you put your name on these things and it go, it doesn't go unnoticed, man. Cause I think like people think about you and they see you at these shared events and that means a lot. So I know we're trying to bring it back to the positivity part, but dude, the make a wish thing is so legit. I looked it up yesterday. Do you know that John Cena has granted, like, I think it's like 360 make a wishes. That's all. Like that? And that, I mean, is it Pete, like him body slamming kids and stuff? I think it's more of like a punch to the gut. That's, I would do that. 
Uh, yeah, you know, when you hear stuff about that, you know, when somebody, you know, obviously John Cena is extremely, he's huge. And when they give back like that, it is, I mean, imagine being that kid. And uh, it is, uh, it changes their lives. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I used, Russell Wilson, when he was on the Seahawks, did the same thing. He would go to the uh, Seattle Children's Hospital every week and sit with all those kids. And uh, I know that Seattle is pissed that he left, but I'm like, that guy brought us a Super Bowl and was about as nice as you could possibly be to every kid he could. And I think just physically, what I've learned is like physically just showing up to shit is more than ha like when people like put on clothes and make an effort that way i was like oh it goes a long way and so that's what you should think about out there folks and maybe a brush <laughs> <laughs> all right one last one last one for me going back to your seahawks roots because i know you're a huge fan there's a two-parter about that what were you thinking when they did not run the ball um and also, uh, is the 10th man a real thing in Seattle? Because I'm, by the way, I should preface this by I'm a Patriots fan. Hate me now. Right. No. Well, screw you. And yeah. you live in Chicago? 10 years ago, I moved here from Boston. So. And he admits uh, this all the time to Chicagoans. I'm always like, why? Okay. I get, okay. 10 years. Okay. That's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, they should have run the ball. Uh, but I understood what he was doing. Uh, which was he was trying to kind of trick the defense like you know we're gonna run it so we're gonna throw it which was not a great decision it could have gone you know almost anywhere the problem was is that the patriots were marching down the field uh, at will against our defense so uh that i was worried that i was like okay we're gonna score here but they're just gonna march it right back down so that was uh, I, that's what I was worried about. It also sucks because the greatest reception in Super Bowl history happened to play before where we bombed it and the ball fell into our guys. I mean, they were like, oh my gosh, we're going to win. Uh, I was there. It was disappointing. Uh, and so there, that hurts, still hurts. Um, what am I saying? Oh, the 10th, uh, the 10th man, the 10th man. That's well, what no, there is no 10th man. There's a 12th man. I mean, 12 I men. 12 I don't men. know how it works in um, Boston. <laughs> 12 men, 12 men. You guys don't have enough people on your team. Yeah, that's apparently. Right, that's right. Uh, uh, yeah, the 12th man is, uh, yeah, uh, Seattle is uh, one of, the, if not the best city for sports. Uh, everyone always talks about East Coast sports, and I could give a shit. And, uh, but the West coast of Americans, America sports is great. And, uh, like a million people showed up when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl at, to the parade, a million, there's only 5 million in the state. Yeah. So, uh, like the Kraken tickets have been like, as soon as we got an NHL team, those tickets were sold out and way too, and now you can't, I mean, they're so expensive and it's a crime we don't have. An NBA team, Howard Schultz, thanks a lot, you idiot. And, uh, and so anyway, and then, you know, like everyone thinks like in LA where there's no culture here, they always say there's tons of culture and people, they love their sports here. There are tattoo parlors that are just dedicated to Dodger tattoos and that's all they do. So uh, when I hear like, well, LA, you know, it's like, you know, it's kind of soulless. And I was like, screw you. And so, uh, so I, I mean, I've been here for 22 years and the Sonics have been gone for 20 years. And, uh, so I'm like, go Lakers. Uh, yeah. So there, there you go. And, uh, and people are like, you don't root for Oklahoma. I'm like, uh, that would be the last team I would ever root for. <laughs> oh, that's where I grew up. Oh yeah. man. Oklahoma. Screw you. Screw you. <laughs> oh, I love the passion behind the football. We are some big football fans here. Um, okay. So last question for me, and this is what we ask everyone on the show so we're not just targeting you for a big lofty response but we would oh, love to here we go <laughs> if you could help one person <laughs> no one actually it's, it's deep it's deep if you could give away all your money if you could leave any legacy what would it be uh any legacy hmm oh no just kidding <laughs> uh anyway <laughs> legacy um what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, he always looked about five years younger than his actual age. I think that's what I want. That's why I hit the gym so much. You don't want to go too far. Ten. That's unrealistic. You don't want that's impossible. Like you just want to stay in shape and eat pretty well. And that should get me to at least the mid 80s 
without too much dementia. Dude, August 20th, Rivers Casino. Can't wait. We're going to be there. It's going to be, uh, maybe we'll laugh. Maybe we'll leave. Who knows? You don't. Um, hey, <laughs> yeah. Just as long as you pay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Me. Yeah, no refunds yeah. allowed. Joe watch, uh, watch Stargirl and watch uh, Celebrity Beef and Crime Scene Kitchen, everybody. Celebrity Beef coming too. Yes, can't wait for that. So thank you so much for the time, bro. Thank you. Right. And I'll think about my legacy. Legacy. <laughs> legacy. All right. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Go, uh, I don't know. Uh, I would say go Bears, but uh, I would that's, never. That's comedy. Now that's comedy.